Good morning, everyone. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. So as others are joining in, let's start our class with a word of prayer. Can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Rebecca, can you lead us in prayer? Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, again, we give you thank you, Lord, that you have given a new day for your children, Lord. Yes, Lord, your mercy is great upon your children, Lord, and your love is unlimited for your children, Lord. Yes, Lord, you are the, you are, Lord, you are the good father for your children, Lord Jesus. Oh, my father, you are the good refuser. Oh, Lord, you are the good holder, Lord Jesus. You are the horn of salvation for your children, Lord Jesus. Oh, my father, today we teach from the teachers, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, help us to teach whatever she teach to your children, Lord. Oh, Lord, help us to keep the word of your scriptures Lord Jesus oh Lord we want your presence of Holy Spirit oh Lord from the beginning to ending you guide us Lord Jesus oh my father you are the oh lovely father Lord Jesus you never shake your children you never give your children Lord Jesus oh my father help us Lord Holy Spirit help us oh Holy Spirit guide us to your children Lord Jesus oh my father you have done many things to your children life Lord Jesus oh my father you your lord you wipes your children's cry lord jesus oh my father you are the only one god for your children lord jesus oh my father help us lord jesus oh father you always hearing our prayer and giving answer from the heaven lord jesus oh lord thank you father oh lord you have hear my prayer lord jesus i believe lord jesus and give you give the answer to your children lord jesus thank you father oh thank you father in the name of jesus I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Once again, uh, welcome to today's session on Ministers Foundation. Well, today we are going to uh, study on the topic called family. I hope all of us have downloaded the notes from the stream. All of us have a copy of our notes, the book of Code of Honor. Yes, Pastor. Okay. Okay. So family is a God's design. Family is God's design. Family is very important and it is very potential because God has designed it. By the a word called uh, family or godly family, we mean uh, that family need to please God in all the ways. Uh, you know, uh, um, from uh, being fearful of God and to serve Him together, being there together as a family, to uh, to have the family altar, uh, developing as an example, the uh, head of the family, the father of the family, developing uh, example for his family, showcasing God's love, showcasing God's character, so that through which the spouse and the children can experience God's love uh, in them. In that way, we see that family being the masterpiece of God's creation. Because uh, God created, God showed himself with the love of the family. God put together Adam and Eve together and he said, this is my design. So family was God's design. So uh, being that, keeping that in our mind, we will look into the chapter, how as a family, as a head of the family, how, um, how 
we need to take care of our family how we need to pay attention being the minister uh, being the ministry leader or uh, being the head of the family how uh, the man should take care of the family what are the important areas that we need to keep in mind while we serve god at the same time how we balance our family so let's turn to our notes so for many of us christian ministry uh you know uh, may not be uh, maybe this is one of the challenging area for many pastors or the ministry leaders maybe it is one of the challenging area to balance the family and the ministry so as we say there is a call god has called me for ministry there is a call even to the family there is a call even to the family that's why uh, you know god brought uh, the man and women together and he has united them together so god has put us together what god has put let not man put us let not man separate it so god has joined god has brought this family so uh, as we say there is a call for us over ministry the same way there is a call for us over family so a christian family is very important uh, as a ministry leader we need to take care we need to nurture we need to you know nourish and cherish our family and also at the same time we need to be mindful of being an example a good example to our spouse to our children many families we see where uh, the uh, the the pastor or the ministry leader would have paid more attention to the ministry and uh, uh, let aside the family struggle and we see that uh, because the man of god feels that he feels that the ministry is more important he feels like if i take care of the ministry god will take care of the family this is uh, another kind of understanding what they have so what is very important here is we need to have a right kind of understanding if god has put something responsible in our hand that means what we need to nurture that it is our duty to nurture and take care of that we need to be uh, we need to learn how we can balance both because both are important it is something like uh, two eyes we can't let go of one and we can't keep one eyes right we need to learn to balance it and here today uh, if we are going to study how important is family how god is asking us to pay attention to our family about the ministry so the requirements of a minister first we can see what is the requirements of a christian minister and one of us please turn to first uh, timothy to the book of first timothy chapter 3 verse 3 onwards 3 4 and 5 can one of us please read can we all take turn to read scriptures today so that we can keep the session interactive and interesting an overseer then must have must be above reproach the husband of one wife temperate prudent respectable hospitable able to teach not addicted to wine or pugnacious but gentile peaceable free from the love of money he must be one who manages his household well keeping his children under control with Go all ahead. dignity that's it uh till verse 5 correct yes yes it's done yes. sometimes the version is different so that's the yeah, reason sure. we may not know like till where it's done okay so uh, the minister the christian minister must be uh, must be one who rules his own house well having his own children in submission with all reference for if a man of god uh, does not uh, uh, know how to take care of his own house how will he take care of the church of god is a question so as a man of god as a ministry leader 
we need to take care of our family first. So that shows an example. We set an example that, you know, when we have set our family in order, we can also take care of a church and set things in order. So it is not that, uh, you know, if we are the ministry leader or, uh, you know, uh, we serve God, doesn't mean that everything will be fine in our married life. There would be ups and downs. There would be challenges, especially if... Um, you know, uh, yes, if the man of God alone is serving and the wife have to take care of the family, if the man of God had to uh, travel from one place to the other and he's busy in the ministry, here we see, uh, you know, the uh, wife and the children suffer. No one to take care. We see uh, many stories like that. I'm sure you're in the first year, but when you'll move on uh, in the second year, you the do's and the leader. How many ministry leaders pay attend, paid attention more towards the ministry and family lagged behind. There are many leaders who didn't even know that his wife was unwell and passed away. They didn't even know the children were unwell and they passed away. They were not paid attention to. They expected God to take care of them and while they do the world tour in preaching the good news and gospel to everyone. But here the own family was uh, seeking for the love and attention of their father. There are many families who have been separated because of that. Many marriages have been, um, you know, suffering because of this. Children have not even seen the father's face and they've grown. They didn't even get to experience the Father's love. The man of God may be excellent in uh, sharing the word of God, uh, preaching the word and uh, getting appreciation from everyone around him. But his own family he was not able to set an example for. We need to be very careful in such cases. As we set ourselves as an example and uh, uh, share the love of God with others at home, between the four walls, it is very important to show that Christ love to our family, to our spouse, to our children, because they are the one who will be watching us. They will be looking at our life. Very important to, you know, uh, uh, set our life as an example to our children. So here we see uh, in today's uh, lesson, we see that there are three postures in one life. In a person's life, we may come across three postures. Can, one, can I request one of us to please turn to Luke 14, 26. Can I request it to take up Luke chapter 14, verse 26. And Roslyn, if you can take up First Corinthians chapter seven, verse twenty nine to thirty five, and Zeli, if you can take up First Timothy chapter three, verse two. Okay, we just read this. We just read this. Okay, maybe the first two verse. Maybe Zeli, you can still read again. First Timothy chapter three, verse two to five. Ma'am, Luke chapter fourteen verses. 26. 26. Luke chapter 14, verses 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brother and sister, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Next. I'm 27 also. Thank you. Ma'am, 1st Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29 to 35. But this I say, brethren, the time is short, so that from now on, even those who have wives should be as though they had none. Those who weep as though they did not weep. Those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice. 
those who buy as though they did not possess and those who use this world as not misusing it for the form of this world is passing away but i want you to be without care he who is unmarried cares for the things of the lord how he may please the lord but he who is married cares about the things of the world how he may please his wife there is a difference between a wife and a virgin the unmarried woman cares about the things of the lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit but she who is married cares about the things of the world how she may please her husband and this i say for your own profit not that i may be that i may put a leash on you but for what is proper and that you may serve the lord without distraction amen amen 1 Timothy 3, 2-5 A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rule his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence, for if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. So what we see in all these three scriptures, all these are there in the Bible and all these are given to us in the New Testament. So what does it mean? Is it contradicting to one another? How, are we, can, how we can interpret this, how we can apply this in our life? So there are three postures. So Lord Jesus said in the book of Luke that if we do not hate a wife, children, we cannot be his disciple. And Paul writes in the book of Corinthians saying, the Lord instructs us through Paul that he who is married should live as though he is not married so that he is not distracted. And again, the same author, same person, writes in the book of Timothy. The Lord instructs us through Paul. The spiritual leader, he, the one who wrote the book of Corinthians and instructed them, and now he's writing to, the, uh, to Timothy saying that you must take care of your wife and children and have the home in order. You have to pay attention to them. Sometimes the ministry leaders pick one of them and they choose to live all of their life based on that one particular posture or one particular scripture. Or some uh, may decide to hate their family completely, neglect or uh, be separated from the wife and children and say, Jesus gave me this verse, God spoke to me and he asked me to, you know, uh, uh, hate your wife and your children so that so only then you can be my disciple. Completely they abandon the family. Or they also take up the Paul scripture saying that one who is married uh, should live their life or conduct their life as though he's not been married. So that I don't want to have any kind of distract, uh, distraction and they let go of their family. Without even thinking that God had united them. They are breaking the covenant of God that they made. In the altar saying that uh, during good times and bad times I will stay with my partner. What happened to that promise that you made in the altar? Not even thinking of that word, the promise that you did, friend of God and the congregation. Letting go of it due to, you know, our personal struggle or, or sometimes it is for a personal benefit. But just taking one particular scripture. But the three instances are given saying that in the different season in our life, we may have to hold on to certain things, but it is not a permanent.
the first uh, scripture jesus says that unless and until you hate your uh, wife and children you cannot be my disciple if you do not hate your wife and children we cannot be his disciple or that is nothing but give first priority to god above all else is god uh a priority should be god that place the first place the first love in any of our life should be god not our spouse not our children here jesus is talking about our internal position our heart the first place in our heart where is that are you given to your wife saying my wife is about everything my husband is about everything so god is looking uh, at our heart condition where the scripture says those who worship the lord we need to worship the lord true in our spirit giving that first love to god so here jesus is talking about that first love not to be given to anyone but there are uh, in family life there are different season that we come across sometimes we come across the first like how jesus said and the second paul uh, says that uh, even if you are married you should live as though you are, you are you are not married when you're serving in the ministry you should not let go of the ministry saying i'm married i need to give the uh, first priority to my uh, family and i cannot uh, do uh, uh, serve god so uh, there are instances in your ministry in your way of life when you come uh, you know when you are in, uh, when you're balancing both ministry and family life where certain things you need to sacrifice for your family and serve god but that doesn't mean you completely abandon your family and take up the ministry but then there is a balance you may have to travel leave your family aside and travel for a month or few weeks but when you come back see to it that you give your full attention to your family try to balance it when the time when you're away from your family but you're back and spend extra time with your family uh, give your time your personal attention to your wife and kids so that they uh, they they, are, they don't uh, lack your love in the family and the third is as uh, paul instructs to timothy saying that be a good uh, a good husband to your wife and a good father to your children and keep your home in order be mindful that yes you are a man of god at the same time you have a family to provide to take care of take that responsibility as well because god has designed this family god has brought you all together god has blessed you with the children who is the heritage so it is your responsibility to provide for your home and take care of the children we cannot abandon them we cannot abandon them it is very important sometimes the ministry leaders takes up the extreme case take up one particular scripture and neglect that needs to be avoided because as a man of god we need to be a bishop we just read it in first timothy how we need to we need to be blameless husband of one wife and children need to be respected so with that we will move on to the next one nurture our relationship with our spouse so how do we balance our family and the ministry we need to ask god yes there will be challenges in our family life but then when we ask god when uh, when we seek him god gives us the grace gives us the grace to take care gives us the grace the wisdom the understanding to take care of our family and our ministry at the same time so can one of us turn to ephesians chapter 5 verse 28 and 29 please Ephesians chapter 5 28 and 29 so husbands ought to love one, their own wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it just as the lord does the church amen okay. 
he who loves his wife loves himself for no one ever hated his own flesh so what happened in marriage both became one in flesh so if you hate your wife it's like hating your own self but then we need to nourish and cherish. Yes, there would be ups and downs, but we need to sit, discuss together. You will learn more in detail in the Christian marriage and family. If you have any differences, if you need to discuss certain things, sit and discuss, but come back together. If a man of God is saving the whole world with a beautiful sermon, but if he's not able to save his own family, own home, What does it benefit him? So the primary cause for this is uh, that while um, while the man of God is uh, uh, busy nurturing people in the congregation, he becomes full time saying that God has given me this opportunity. God has blessed me with a ministry and my ministry is growing. I need to give in more time and I don't have time for my family. So whom are you giving more time to? The church family. As you think the church and the people of the church are important, do you also see your own family are the same kind of people? Even they need you. You may be the pastor of them, but you are the only husband and the only father to your children. Even they need your love and your care. That should be your primary purpose. So here we are not telling that you need to completely not serve the ministry, but then we are trying to say, uh, bring a balance between both. You need to set certain time aside for your ministry and certain time aside for your family. Where you don't take any extremes, you neglect the ministry and take care of your family. No, we don't do that. At the same time, you should not neglect your family to take care of the ministry. So, uh, uh, like many ministry leaders, even when we, uh, you know, we had this uh, campaign for last two to three months in the month of, started in the month of May and June, where in India, um, uh, we want to support the uh, pastors. Of, our, uh, uh, of the rural areas where they were going through the difficult season due to COVID. Uh, they didn't have the church and, you know, we tried to uh, support them. So we had some verification process that they need to go through. And when we were talking to them, they were clearly saying, hey, listen, I've been called for ministry and I cannot work and I need to depend on God. In faith, God will, yes, depend on God and God will take care of everything. And they were feeling so proud, you know, they were saying, I have even left my family aside to serve God. It was very scary for us to hear certain things. I've left my family aside. I have sacrificed my family in love of God. So what happens to your family? Uh, maybe they are good. They are doing better. They uh, we have I have sent them to their parents' house so that they will take care. And how many children do you have, Pastor? Like he'll say, I have two children, or I have three, four children. Uh, isn't it that scary? The pastor has left his wife, his four children, in responsibility of the girl's family and pastors doing the ministry in the rural area. When have you met? When was the last date that you met your wife? It's been a few months, or some of them said few years. What is your wife doing now? Maybe she's working to take care of herself and the children. Or maybe uh, aged parents are working to take care of the daughter and the grandchildren. Is that right? God didn't ask us to do that, isn't it? God has given us the responsibility to nurture and build the relationship. It is our family. It is my family. She is my wife. He is my husband. I need to take care of them. I need to take care of my children. God blessed me with the children. They are my heritage. I need to spend time. I need to build a future for them. I will not get this time. We need to pay attention to that and take care of them. Mm. 
we need to minister to our own family by nurturing and uh, building that relationship with a spouse, with our children. Because you are the only father the children have and you are the only husband that the wife has, spouse has. So we need to nurture a relationship with our wife and with our children. Can one of us please turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Ma'am, can I? Yes, please. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Amen. So as parents, it is our responsibility to bring up our children in training and uh, in, in the way of the Lord. Very often we see that if the, uh, a man of God is involved in the ministry, the burden of bringing up children entirely falls on the wife. Or there are certain instances where husband and wife both are serving in the ministry, then uh, the spiritual nurturing or the nurturing of the children has been, uh, has been uh, given to the congregation. One of us uh, from our church will take care of our children. They will bring them up as we serve God. How can we give that responsibility to somebody else? The church, there are children. We need to take care of them. We need to take turns to take care of our children if you're in the ministry, if both of us are working. We, we cannot say that, okay, Lord, I'm serving you. You take care of my family. Okay. One of instance, you have been traveling or both of your husband and wife are going out. You're given responsibility to somebody else to take care of your children, maybe their grandparents or, um, you know, someone in the church for a few hours. It's okay. Or a week or two or three days. It's okay. But then on a long run, that should not be the case. We, here, we are not talking about instances like few hours or few days, like one or two days. We are not talking about that. But the parents, the godly parents, the spiritual parents, I mean, where the husband and wife are involved in the ministry and they have been traveling the world together, but then their family, the, the children have been neglected or the children have been given in the hands of a caretaker is not a wise thing to do. Later, what, what would be the uh, result of it? The parents may grow as the children grow. They may not be in line with, with, the, uh, with the word of God. The children may go astray. They may go away from what God has asked them to be. So as a, uh, as a, a ministry leader, we need to nurture our children with the word and be with them to show God's love to them and bring them up in the right way, in the way God has called each one of us to be. Because that is one of our responsibility that God has given us to train the children in the way that they should go, that they should grow. So this may not uh, happen by just we instructing them or telling the caretaker to do what to do, what not to do. But then we need to showcase that love in our way of life because our actions are the way we live as much more power and than our words and what we tell them. Because children will look at us the way we walk in our life. We should not become too busy to give in the time to our children. So what we do is, yes, we both, as a husband and wife, we are in the ministry. We have been blessed by two children. And uh, uh, I have two sons. About uh, The elder one is about six years and the younger one is four years. Yes, it is a challenge for us uh, to go out anywhere. Uh, because they are too small. And right now, uh, due to COVID, there are no schools. Uh, they have been homeschooled. I mean, not homeschooled, uh, online classes for the elder one. And for the younger one, we are just homeschooling. So we take turns to be with our children. Because they are too small to, uh, I mean, leave them to take care of themselves. Even when we teach at the Bible college, yes, we have a class scheduled in such a way that one of us, uh, uh, we be in online classes and one of us with the children. 
Even when we go out on ministry, one of us will step out on ministry, one of us will take care of our children. Very rare occasion, it's that we have gone together on ministry for any house visit or any place. Yes, there are certain sacrifices that we need to do, but at the same time, we both are serving. We, we, we take turn, we, we see to it that we are there for our children. And both of us play the important role in our children. Like, you know, uh, trying to feed them, to put them to sleep. We take turns. It's not like one person doing everything for the children. We need to give in that time. We, uh, the family all the time, we see to it, all four of us sit together and pray. We work to provide to our family. And uh, can one of us please turn to First Timothy chapter five, verse eight? One Timothy five eight. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. If anyone does not provide for his own, especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse, worse than an unbeliever. Very powerful words, isn't it? These are very strong words made by Apostle Paul. If we fail to provide to our own household, we are unacceptable before God. Yes, there are certain instances in our family. Uh, 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 you know, uh, I've heard in uh, in certain families, like they uh, they have the tough time financially, uh, or especially in the Christian ministry when they start the church and the ministry, they will have difficulties. But how they can manage? How they can manage? Yes, God has called you for the ministry. God will provide. Yes, but then God has also given us the wisdom. Uh, because I have seen many pastors say this, God has called me, so I need to uh, wait on faith. God knows that I have, I'm married and I've got children, so God will provide us accordingly. So what do you do, pastor? I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God. Many instances, as I said recently in the camping, we had an opportunity to talk to many pastors and many pastors' wife. This is what they have said. This is what they have said. God has called me for the ministry and I depend and wait on God. God will provide. The God who provided Elijah will provide us. Yes, that is the faith. But at the same time, we need to work. We need to work to provide for our family. God called me, ma'am, so I cannot get back to work. God has told me, don't turn back to the uh, plow. See, they quote scriptures everywhere. If I get back to the ministry, uh, uh, sorry, get back to work, God will be uh, displeased and he will punish me if I do that. And if you hear the wife, wife says, uh, ma'am, I'm not well, I'm sick. And I go to do the uh, 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 very um, uh, meager job in houses like, you know, she goes because she's not been educated. She goes to, uh, uh, to do some uh, minimal work in the houses to earn money to provide for the family. What is your husband doing? He's, uh, he's praying at home. He's praying for the congregation. He's praying for God to provide, but he's not doing anything. That was very sad to hear. His own family suffering. They have been blessed with two children, but both the children are unable to go to school because they are not able to pay the fees. I'm praying for God's children in the church or somebody else to come and help me to take care of my family. But I, uh, you know, I depend on God. 
I depend on God. Do you think all these are right things? We need to depend on God, but God has given us the wisdom. Yes, God has asked you to, God called you for the ministry. You need to step in. But at the same time, till your ministry goes, take up a job. We have seen many uh, many uh, matured leaders in the ministry where initial of the ministry, they worked. They worked to provide for their family so that their family is financially stable. They have food on their table and the children are going to a good school to educate themselves. Their family does not suffer. And as the ministry grows, it grows and there's, uh, uh, you know, enough of, uh, uh, um, uh, you get enough from the ministry to take care of your family and uh, to take care of the family needs, at least the basic needs of sending them to school and your travel expense and your monthly wages are met, then you can quit your job and pay your full time to the ministry. So that's till then you need to work. Till then, you need to take up a job to meet the need of your family, to nurture and provide them what has been needed because family should not be neglected. We need to work to provide to our family. Pursue God's purpose as an individual. Can I request Jeffina to please turn to Matthew chapter 10, verse 37 to 38? Jeffina? Sid, can you read Matthew chapter 10, verse 37 to 38? Matthew chapter 10, verse 27 to 28. All things have been committed to me by my father. No one knows the son except the father. And no one knows the father except the son. And those to whom the son chooses to reveal him come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Thank you. This point here may be a sudden shift from the importance of we placing on the family home is earlier section. And the point I uh, we make here is while we maintain the importance, uh, you know, in our family and home, we cannot at any point compromise our love to God and obedience to his call. We cannot use a family as an excuse and not uh, pushing forward to the call of God. As we said, we need to have a balance between our family and the ministry. Because God is called to serve him. At the same time, we need to take care of our family. We need to show to our family the God kind of love. We need to show our family the God kind, uh, you know, God's love to our children. We need to be there to do both. We need to, you know, we need to have this balance. We need to ask God, God, give us the wisdom, the grace to handle both. Because both should not suffer. If you pay too much attention to your family, then your ministry will suffer. If you pay too much attention to your ministry, your family will suffer. Yes, as an individual, you may have three calls. You need to be as a husband. Uh, you need to play a good role to your wife. As a father, you need to take care, nurture your children. And as a leader, you need to take care of your church. All these are interlinked. You cannot separate each one away because these are the responsibilities God has put within you. And we are expected to pay equal attention to all of these roles. We need to strengthen. If any area you are weak, we need to ask God, see God's help in that area. And I'm sure God will give us that strength to overcome our weakness and pay attention to the basic needs in our life. So success in one area will provide strength to see the other areas. When we uh, we are strong as a, as a, a spouse, as a, a has good husband to our spouse, 
at the same time when it will uh, it will help us to love our children take care of them at the same time when your family is in good shape and been balanced well i'm sure you with that in your mind you can pay full attain uh, full uh, attention even to balance your ministry can one of us please turn to psalms 128 3 Okay. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house your children like olive plants all around your table Thank you thank you so as you have a personal call to serve God in the ministry at the same time even your wife will have certain call we shouldn't pressurize her to do what you want her to do. just because she has married a minister of God doesn't mean that she she has to become a pastor she have to serve along with you know you need to uh, give her the liberty to pursue what god has called her to do what if her interest is to serve as a doctor in a hospital or to serve as a teacher in a school or uh, you know anything as a beautician or any other area what she is interested in what skill that she is carrying we need to recognize that and support her encourage her and allow her to grow the area that god has called her but not pressurize her as i am a man of god you have married to me and you have to listen to me and you have to serve along with me and you cannot take up a different course and go in a different way we should not uh, pressurize or uh, implement what we wanted her to do in her life than allowing her what god has called her to do so that she can be fruitful in her life she can serve what god has called her to do and she will flourish in that area but if you pressure her she is so much dissatisfied in her life she is so much uh, uh, unfulfilled in her life she will be like a, a, a sour grapes figuratively we are speaking here there will be no joy no pleasure at home there won't be any kind of peace at home so what is the example a spouse will set to the children or you, uh, as a man of god what is the example that we set to our spouse and our children that you cannot do what you want to do there is no free will in the life but you have to listen to me when god himself does not do that he gives us the free will so we need to allow our spouse our children to see what god has called them to do and give them the liberty encourage them to do what they have to do so that god's plan purpose will be fulfilled in their life and we can see them being happy flourishing growing and together you can do great exploits in the kingdom of god and there's nothing wrong in that yes sometimes it is not easy but then it takes lot of wisdom and ensure that both the spouses are encouraged to grow irrespective of the calling that god has called us we need to support each other and be there for uh, be there for each other but this will take a 10 minutes break and we will come back okay thank you so much see you back soon God bless. Thank you. Thank you.